Thanks a lot for joining. My name is Anna Barnett, and today I would like to present to you how at Get Your Guide we're amplifying A-B testing with Looker. Um, first, a few words about me. Um, my background is in quantitative methods in economics, which is a combination of statistics, maths, and business. And I've always loved to travel. That's why when I joined Get Your Guide five years ago, it was my day when my dreams came true because I was able to combine my passion for data and for travel. And I'm a senior data analyst at Get Your Guide, and I'm focused on product analytics. And um, this includes also A-B testing. So what are we going to talk about today? First of all, I will introduce you to Get Your Guide. Then I'll show you how we evolve our A-B testing practice and also what challenges we had and how we overcame those. So let's start. Get Your Guide is an online marketplace for travel experiences around the world. You can book with us tickets for top attractions around the world, guided tours, cooking classes, and if you're more adventurous, you can take part in a desert safari in Dubai or climb to volcanoes in Bali. Um, at this point, we are the largest marketplace um, for travel experiences in Europe, and we are based in Berlin, Germany. Uh, we have more than 50,000 experiences on our platform, and we are backed up by companies like SoftBank or Spark Capital. And last but not least, earlier this year, we achieved a unicorn status, which makes me personally very, very excited. Get Your Guide started around uh, 2008 as a platform connecting uh, travelers to uh, local people who could serve as guides. And on this slide, you can admire beautiful design from 2008. Fortunately, we no longer look like that, and also our business model has changed. Nowadays, we connect um, uh, travelers to professional suppliers, and also, I hope you agree, we look much better. <clears throat> and this took more than just one A-B test to get here. And to visualize that for you, I wanted to show you our design from 2014, and also from, sorry, from 2016. Over time, A-B testing has become our daily bread. We use it to select new product features, for instance, test if we should ask travelers for their travel, or travel dates earlier in the funnel, as well as select the best ranking algorithm for our pages. And while we've been experimenting with our product, we've been also experimenting with how we present the results to our teams. And I did some archaeological work on this topic, and I found out that we started around 2014 with a very simple solution of a summary email sent to our relevant stakeholders. And we had a few iterations of the, this email. And um, on the slide, you can see how it looked like in 2015. As you can see, it was not very informative, pretty boring, no one was excited about it. Um, and the winds of change came around 2016, when at the end of 2016, we introduced Looker, and we've been using it ever since. In 2017, we built our first A-B testing dashboard with uh, Looker. It was a huge success. Teams loved it. It was interactive. They were able to monitor more metrics, for instance, revenue per visitor, bounce rate, and so on and so forth. However, it was still far from perfect, and there were many issues with that. First of all, back then, we did not have a single source of truth. Um, the high-level results for our A-B testing dashboard were calculated based on the raw logs. However, if teams wanted to deep dive into their experiments, they would use a different data source. This was very confusing, and imagine all of, the, all of those poor data analysts whose work was constantly questioned. The other problem was around efficiency. Back then, we supported only one success metric, which was conversion rate. But teams ran their experiments using other metrics, for instance, as mentioned before, revenue per visitor or add to cart. And the third part, uh, the third problem was correctness. We struggled with how teams interpreted the results. Sometimes they were cherry picking metrics, and generally they had problems understanding A-B testing principles. That's why we set off on a journey to improve our A-B testing framework, and it was a really bumpy road. But I believe we were quite successful, and this is the story I would like to share with you right now. 
So first, we wanted to address reliability, and that's why we decided to build a single source of truth. Um, we migrated all of our events to our new analytics pipeline. We created new events. We backfilled previous years, all the jazz. It was a huge effort, and this is the architecture we ended up with. So right now, our applications send events to Kafka, and from Kafka, they're collected um, and stored in a parquet file. Um, on top of this parquet file, we run a daily job which cleans um, those events from bots. Uh, we join it with uh, internal data sources, for instance, attribution and parts, the most impo important fields. And those enriched events are ready to be used by business users, for instance, through Looker or Databricks. And um, that's how we check the problem with reliability. And to highlight that, it was a really huge uh, project. It spanned across multiple teams, across multiple uh, months, but it was totally worth it because nowadays, no matter if you drag and drop in Looker or write custom queries somewhere else, you always read data from the same table. Um, so once we sorted the problem with reliability, uh, we wanted to uh, increase efficiency. And there was only one way to move forward, which was enhanced self-service. And this is where we put Looker to work. Because in 2019, we launched two new dashboards, actually V2 and V3 of the same uh, dashboard. Um, but we also realized that just a single experiment dashboard is not enough for the teams because they have lots of questions both before and after they launch an experiment. That's why we launched, we built a whole suite of uh, tools which support teams from start to finish. So now teams can use a sample, a sample size calculator, and this happens in Looker. And they can also uh, use Kibana dashboard to monitor assignments in real life. There's the uh, A-B testing dashboard, which I mentioned before. There's the experiment funnel analysis, and also teams can easily access an overview all of, the, of all the experiments they've been running in the past. Having said that, still at the core of our experimentation framework is this A-B testing dashboard for a single experiment. So let's spend some more time talking about it. Our idea was simple. We wanted the teams to do as little work as possible. So now they just have to follow three simple steps. First, they need to design the experiment and prepare the, the variants. Then they need to configure the experiment. And by this, I mean they need to specify if they want to test for conversion rate or maybe for revenue per visitor or maybe for add to cart. And they also need to tell us if they want to test with 90% confidence level or 95%, and then write it into a configuration table. And after they're done with those two steps, they can just sit back and relax because we will compute everything for them. And here on the slide, you can see the final uh, effect of our work, which is A-B testing dashboard for a single experiment. In real life, it's much, much longer, but um, those top tiles is where all the magic happens. Um, it's super intuitive to use. Um, and what teams need to do is that they need to specify the experiment ID they're interested in, as well as tell us which variation is their control variation, because with V3, we started to support testing multiple variants at the same time. Um, by knowing those two information, we can pull from the configuration table the um, um, success metric they care about and the, and the confidence levels, and then we can answer their questions. Was my experiment successful? What was the uplift? What were the um, confidence um, intervals? And if you run A-B tests, you also know that things can go wrong. For instance, some other teams can ship some code somewhere else in the application, which will break your test. And you want to be able to identify that. That's why in our A-B testing dashboard, we also built in some quality assurance. For instance, team can now monitor their cumulative uplift over time to see if there are any breaks in the trend. And they can also see if uh, the assignments are balanced. Um, my favorite part is actually the possibility to uh, access a comparison of steps in the funnel. Um, teams can just click one link on the dashboard and be uh, sent to this view. 
And I'm super excited about it because this is usually the first question product managers ask. So how did my funnel change? And now they can answer this question themselves. Um, so now you know that it's possible to build an A-B testing solution with Looker, and how would you do it if you wanted to do it yourselves? yourself? So let's look under the hood. I mentioned before the events table, and in addition to the events table, we also have our assignments table in which we store um, into which variation each um, visitor was assigned to as well as the configurations table, where we store the success metric and the confidence levels. And this all leaves on S3. And initially, so in our V2 version of the dashboard, we would actually query all the data directly from those tables, join them, and do all the calculations there. But that was a terrible idea. It took really long time to execute. Um, that's why we had to come up with an alternative solution. And right now, we have a mid layer, which is an experiment summary uh, table in between. Um, and what it does is just, it's basically a daily job which summarizes all basic uh, metrics. So for each experiment, for each day, for each variation, we calculate base metric from the beginning of the experiment till the current date, and then just append this um, as an extra row to this table. Um, what's important here, though, is that we only store factual uh, information and we do not do any calculations in this table because we want to keep our definitions light and flexible. However, there's one exception. We do store here standard deviations for some of our uh, metrics because those calculations simply need to happen on raw data. Once we have this experiment summary table, we're able to build a Looker Explore and bring uh, results to the teams. So what happens in Looker Explore? First of all, we get those base information, so experiment ID and the control variation, um, as well as pull from the uh, configuration table success metrics and confidence levels. And you can also see the snippets of code which we actually use um, in LookML. Um, what else happens is that we're able to calculate success metrics. And since in V3 we started to support multiple success metrics, um, we use a series of case when statements to select the right measures. So for instance, if teams work with revenue per visitor, we would say pull revenue as a num numerator and pull um, visitors as the nominator. As you can tell, we are not native speakers because our numerator was call, is called nominator in all code. And um, based on that, we also can calculate uh, the success metric for the control variant specified by the user. And this is how we arrive to the uplift of our experiment. Um, and obviously, we also need to calculate the statistics. So we calculate the variance, the critical value of Z, and the minimum detectable effect. And this is how we're able to um, tell the teams if their experiment was successful. And this brings me to the chair on top, which is our Looker dashboard, our visualization layer, uh, which is nowadays used by the teams. And um, this dashboard is probably one of the most popular dashboards we have ever built uh, with Looker. Um, and uh, this, this dashboard is a really, has been a real game changer for us because we managed to uh, generate big efficiency gains. And this happened because we started to support a wide range of tests. So nowadays, teams can run tests with multiple variants. They can choose from multiple success metrics. And also, they can configure confidence levels. What's also important, from our perspective, the solution is quite easy to maintain and extend. For instance, it's very easy to add uh, additional success metrics, especially if we can embed them in LookML code. <clears throat> so that was the story of how we addressed efficiency, and there was still one problem to tackle, which was correctness. Um, and here we decided to invest in educating our teams because there's more to A-B testing than just maths and statistics. There's the whole design, there's the hypothesis, 
um, there are bugs, there are things which are specific to your company that you want to make everyone aware of. Um, and what we did first is that uh, we launched self-study material, which became a part of our data guide. And data guide is our uh, internal um, platform where teams can learn, for instance, how to use Looker. They can watch videos on how to select metrics. Um, and now they can also learn about A-B testing. And they learn how to analyze A-B tests, how to design them, how to implement them. And this is all organized in a question and answers form, so it's very easy to digest. And in addition to um, the self-study, we also launch a series of hands-on workshops. And if you want to take part in the workshop, first you need to familiarize yourself with parts of the self-study. Because we don't want to waste time just repeating theory. We want to gather together, design tests together, analyze them, discuss common pitfalls, and answer questions that teams might have. <clears throat> and last but, last but not least, we also offer support to our teams on a daily basis. We have a ded dedicated Slack channel for uh, Looker users. Uh, where everyone can post their questions. And um, what's um, interesting is that there is always one person who is on duty to answer uh, questions from uh, the teams. And this person is called Lucarator, so that you don't have to say add here and then notify everyone. But there's just this one person who knows there's a problem which needs to be addressed. Um, but what's also important is that we've noticed that people build a real community around this uh, Looker channel. And very often before the Lookerator is able to uh, respond to the issue, someone else might actually have already an answer. Um, and in this way, we have checked all the check boxes. Uh, which brings me to the end of uh, my presentation. And obviously, our solution is still not perfect, but I do think um, we improved a lot from where we started. And um, just to iter reiterate again on the three key learnings which we generated uh, in this process is that if you haven't done it yet, please provide your teams with a single source of truth. It really um, gives more comfort to everyone. And if you're building your own solution, um, try to match the needs of your teams and support all of their use cases, or at least the ones which are the most important. And last but not least, educate your teams, invest in them, and give them confidence in the decisions they're making. That is all from my side. Thank you so much.